Hi, I'm David, and I want to talk to you about pranayama, the breathing that we're going to do in yoga. So I hope this can be a valuable resource for you as we discuss ways to breathe in yoga. Before we get started, I want to invite you to please like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a Hello? comment. That way we can have a sense of community in here. We've been having a great community with a lot of comments, a lot of feedback and a great exchange of information. So I would love for you to be a part of that and continue with that. So please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Without further ado, let's dive in. So when you start your yoga practice, you're gonna wanna pay a lot of attention to the breath. Now a good yoga instructor will guide you on this. This won't be something that you should have to do automatically where you don't know how to get started. I often have students that really take to breathing very effortlessly, pretty quickly. And I have students where it's a little bit more tricky and difficult for them. So the key is to obviously do your best, the best of your ability, but also keep in mind that your instructor should be there to guide you and help you along the way. So let's talk about ways to breathe. You can breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Often this is a heating breath called Ujjayi, which means victory. You're going to see this breath a lot in Astanga yoga, Vinyasa yoga, Hatha yoga. It's going to be a heating breath. Let's take a couple of examples. Often it's loud, particularly if you're doing Astanga yoga. It's very uh, forceful. It'll warm up your body pretty well. You're going to do it again. Inhale. Exhale. You're here the whole room doing it in some classes. It ha kind of has a cool sound and effect. Kind of helps bring you into that, that mood of community while you're doing your yoga, when you're doing it with a class. But what it's doing for your body is really waking it up, helping it rise up through the chakra system, a little bit of that kundalini energy, which is um, gonna be helpful for you to focus and direct that energy towards any specific task. So you'll see a lot of that in kundalini yoga as well. There's also ways to breathe. There's swara breathing, which is all the breath work that's through the nose. And let's talk about alternate nostril breathing. You may um, remember there's actually an episode of Jimmy Fallon where Tom Brady's wife, Giselle, who in her own right is one of the most famous individuals in the world. I think she's actually more famous than Tom Brady, believe it or not. She certainly makes more money than him as she's been, um, I believe, the top supermodel in the world at some point. So the femininity that she brings is mask, it's just as high or more than the masculinity Tom Brady brings, who is considered almost universally the greatest football player of all time, with football being known as arguably the most masculine sport, and him being the greatest of the greats. And her being a supermodel, and her also being considered the top of the tops, it's arguable that she actually surpasses him. But they have a good balance of the masculine and feminine energy, and that's a lot of what we do in our own bodies with Tantra and Hatha Yoga, the balancing of the masculine and feminine. Alternate nostril breathing is a way to try to help with this balance. Fingers are going to be like here. Yeah, pinky and thumb. You don't have to do it this way. But the way Giselle showed us on Jimmy Fallon, because she's in a meditation and she wanted to give an example, is you're going to close your left nostril, inhale, close right, open left, exhale, inhale again, close left, exhale to the right, and that's one cycle. You're going to want to do about 12 cycles. That's going to help balance you out going to help clear things up for you. It's a really cool way to breathe. It's a form of meditation. Let's talk about one of my favorite ways to breathe, which is going to be in through the mouth, out through the mouth, deep breaths. Now, in singers, we, we do this utilizing the diaphragm. We're going to inhale, relax the shoulders, exhale. I can feel that breath go down my back and my spine 
if I have any sort of injury or back pain, it's a great way to force oxygen into those regions of the body that are particularly having a struggle or a tough time. So you want to consider possibly doing breaths like that whenever you think you might need a tune-up for your body or you're injured or even if you just want better sleep. I can't tell you how many times I've done spinal twists and had these deep breaths done and my sleep quality improved tremendously. Even falling asleep was far easier. My meditations um, may have been easier as well. So you want to try your best to focus on inhaling in, exhaling out, into the mouth, out to the mouth. The way I breathe in this way is I breathe into a thick straw. Think of getting a milkshake. Um, down in Southern California, we have something called boba, which is these tapioca balls. They're pretty thick. They're probably as thick as my index finger. And the straw, obviously, to, to suck these up to chew them has to be pretty thick as well, thicker than the balls, of course. So I think I used to work at one of these shops. I was a manager at some point. I also was a manager at Cold Stone, which was right next door. And because of that, I, I've seen all the thick straws. And when I breathe like this, I'm reminded of that. So I try to paint a picture for you to see because it usually helps me. So you're going to inhale through the thick straw. Breath in. You see the roundness in my mouth, almost like an O, the letter shape. Open. Exhale. When you see this opening, I'm blowing out through that opening. Okay, we'll try it again. Inhale. Relaxing the shoulders. Exhale. Right away, I can feel calmness come over me. I can feel the relief. I had a bit of a headache going on right around here. I can feel that relief right away just by doing a little bit of breathing. There is a lot of research on breathing and the effects of it, not even necessarily related to yoga, though we can obviously couple elements of yoga with some of that research because two things can be true. That said, breathing on its own has its merits and has made some stamps in research. So we wanna look into that, okay? Let's talk about when to do some of these breaths. When you're doing your restorative or your yin yoga and you're doing these deep inhales and exhales, you're going to want to do them as long as you feel comfortable. Usually the postures are going to be around five minutes in yin or restorative. So you're going to be doing these deep breaths for five to ten minutes. Um, a posture close to about 60 minutes. So you're going to want to mentally be prepared for that. One thing that helps me when I know I'm going to be doing a lot of these breaths is to coordinate it with a two and a four, a three and a six, and a four and an eight. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's two and four. We're going to take one continual breath in, relax the shoulders, and one continual breath out. But we're going to breathe in for a count of two, and I'll count, but you don't stop. Go ahead and keep breathing. And then you're going to exhale for a count of four and just let it flow out. Okay, let's give it a shot. Inhale, one, two. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to breathe in for three and six. Do your best. In three, out six. Take an inhale in first. Relaxing the shoulders, exhale. This is just to remind us to stay calm, no rush. Here we go, inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Relaxing the shoulders, four, five, six. Breath in. This is a breath of the counter to catch your breath, exhale. Check in with yourself. Make sure you're feeling okay. We're going to go for four and eight. Again, do your best, best of your ability. You can go at your own go, or you can go with me. I'm going to go now. Inhale, one, two, three, four. 
Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breath in. And breath out. Once again, check in with yourself and see how you feel. Breathing like that will certainly help the time pass. It's a great way to really establish a sense of breath work with the postures, but also help you to get into the moment. You almost don't have a say in it, almost no choice. Your brain is automatically going to do the rewiring for you, which is great. You don't have to think so much. You really don't have to try. It's almost an effortless situation. So just give it a shot and do the best you can. And more importantly, relax and just let go. Your instructor should help you with this. Most likely they will. That's their job to kind of keep an eye out and remind you to breathe. Other than that, they're gonna hopefully stay out of your way. Let this be your practice, let you guide yourself. But their job is to kind of step in here and there, keep you safe, and then stay out of the way and remind you to breathe. Okay. Again, questions, please leave them in the comments below. Hopefully that can be something that you can um, discuss with me or others if you have any specific questions on some of these breaths. Let's talk about some of the breathing when you do your hatha and your vinyasa, more intense styles of yoga. So when you breathe like this, you're going to want to focus on breathing into the nose and out to the nose much more frequent. Inhale in, exhale out. Now watch me lift my arms up as I inhale, inhale, arms up, exhale, forward fold. This is a step into the sun salutations. On the sun salutations, often my students tell me they have a hard time breathing. And I let them know, breathe in, and breathe out on every pose posture. Let me rephrase that. Breathe in, breathe out every time you make a movement. Inhale, arms come up, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, look up, flat back, exhale, a chaturanga plank, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, bring the butt back, downward facing dog. Now we're gonna take five breaths here, inhale, Exhale, that's one. Try to relax your palms, fingers, inhale. Exhale, this is two. Breath in, exhale. Remembering downward dog, we're pretending we're in downward dog. Downward dog is a relaxing posture. Inhale, exhale. Relax your shoulders a bit, this is four. We're gonna go on to five, inhale. Exhale, clear your mind. Don't rush, just focus on breathing. Okay, we're gonna walk into flat back, inhale. Step into flat back, look up. Exhale, forward fold again. Inhale, rise, arms come up, and exhale. Back, heart to center, samasthiti, also tadasana. And you can see how we're breathing, moving breath on every movement. That's to go when you're doing more of these Hatha Vinyasa styles, okay? Keep in mind that we are rising the Kundalini energy upward, the Tantra energy upward. All right, finally, let's talk about breathing in Savasana, Dead Man's Pose. After every class, you're gonna want to do, hopefully, a Dead Man's Pose. This is something I try to avoid, and I try to avoid this for quite a bit of time, but I realize how important this is. Dead man's pose, your savasana, svavasana, is a way for you to allow your body to process everything it just went through, to process everything that just happened. So when you do your dead man's pose, you really want to let go, let your body adjust, and then just feel the moment and breathe. You're going to inhale and exhale. You can continue to breathe in through the nose, out through the nose. You can actually do alternate breathing. Inhale, pinky close enough nostril. Exhale, 
close right nostril. Inhale again. Close the left nostril. Open the right. Exhale. You can do many forms of breathing here. You can go on the side and go into the fetal position on your left. Take 12 breaths. Face up. 12 breaths. Go to the right side fetal position. 12 breaths. And then go face down. 12 breaths. You can do the in through the mouth, out through the mouth. Breath in. And breath out. So you have many options here as you do your breathing. Multiple facets to breathe. And there's really no right or wrong answer. So just do the best of your ability and try your best to really focus on the breath work. If you can do that, you're going to help yourself get into a deeper form of meditation and you're most likely feel the benefits right away. You improve quality of sleep. You also may have a lot more energy when you're doing some of these more intensive, um, intense styles of yoga like uh, your vinyasa or hatha styles. Once again, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I will talk to you very soon, and we will discuss more on this topic. Pranayama. Thank you.